Yes, good evening and welcome to the program, Church in Focus, coming to you from the studios of Revelation TV on Sky Digital. Yemi Balogun is my name, and uh, tonight in the studio I have two wonderful people, all the way from Oxford, by the name Pastor Derek Walker and the wife, Pastor or Mrs. Hilary Walker, of a ministry called Oxford Bible Church. Good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening. God bless you. It's good to see you. God bless you. I'm sorry we had to keep you guys at the back for a while, but I believe the anointing is still bubbling inside That's to right. be released. Yes. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you both. <laughs> well, we are a lot of people on this channel would have seen your ministry on air already, but uh, they haven't even heard. They probably they've seen you preaching, but they don't know exactly where you're coming from or how God reached out for both of you. Yes. So I just wanted you to, you know, both in, you know, just in a nutshell, to just share something as to who you are and, you know, what God is doing in your life. Yes. As, well, started. starting with me. Yeah. Um, yeah, my story with the Lord began uh, when I was about 17 years old, coming up to Oxford. And uh, until I was 17, uh, I had one purpose in life. And that was to make it to Oxford, to make it to Oxford University. And wow. my mother had put that into me. <laughs> I had to make it to Oxford or Cambridge, but uh, wow. and then I made it, you know, and it seemed like the purpose of my life was being fulfilled, but that just lasted a couple of days. Then I felt really empty inside, like there has to be more to life than that. And so uh, when I came up to Oxford, I, I felt that looking back now, I can see that the Holy Spirit was working on me. I had this tremendous desire to, to know more about God when I'd look up to the stars and think, is there a God? And because uh, I, I was clueless at that point, I had no religious background, but praise God, in my first term at Oxford, I was there studying maths, uh, God broke through in my life and I suddenly realized he's real and uh, my life just changed right there and uh, I felt a call to the ministry. I didn't really understand that at the time, but that's where it all started for me. Amen. God and then I felt called to Oxford. I, from that time on, I settled down in Oxford. I knew God had something for me to do right there in Oxford. And that's where I met my lovely wife, yeah. Hilary, who has been an Oxford girl. Amen. Yes. You know, the, the interesting thing is that it takes an intellectual to reach out to, uh, to intellectuals. Sometimes, <laughs> the, yeah. The, the <laughs> yes. Wonderful. God bless you. But how easy was it for you to switch over from the intellectual side of things to the supernatural, which is the Bible. Well, what I found was that when I heard the gospel for the first time about Jesus Christ, I, as I suppose as an intellectual, um, I started studying the evidence, the evidence for the resurrection, all the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. And I, and I came to the, f the conclusion intellectually, not only did I desire life because I knew I was dead on the inside, but I came to the conclusion intellectually, this is true. The evidence is conclusive that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God. So Amen. it wasn't a problem from that once I studied the evidence. Amen. Yeah. You know, listening to you, what just keeps coming to my heart is I thank God for your life because, you know, you sound like a very solid teacher. You know, that's why I was, you I know, so. going, through, <laughs> going through your materials. All I can see there is just the word, the word, the word. That's why I keep saying the word, the whole word, and nothing but the word. <laughs> that's right. God bless you, sir. Pastor Hillary. Well, I was born and bred in Oxford. My father was uh, born in Oxford. My grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather. Wow. So I'm sort of really from, totally from Oxford. And um, I, I was just, I was a, a pew warmer for, for years and years and years. But then um, I became ill. And I will tell you a little bit more uh, later on about it but I had a dramatic healing and a dramatic turning to the Lord and after that I really wanted to serve God and then I met Derek and we got married and then we went off to Rama Bible Training Center in Tulsa Oklahoma and that was a wonderful um, two years and then we went to school of a local church and we really felt called to pioneer a church and we came home and started in our front room and there were what, eight of us eight. all together Wow. And so that's that's, that's how. 1991. Yes, wow. 91. So, that's Since amazing. then, the church has grown. 
Yes, well, God bless has. you. God yeah. bless yeah. you. I thank God for your lives. And, um, but I need to, you know, I want you, Pastor Derek, to tell us the, the vision of this ministry, um, Oxford Bible Church, the vision behind it. Yes, that's why we call it Oxford Bible Church, because we want to put the Bible at the center. We, we are a charismatic church. We believe in the power of God. But um, I'm always aware that sometimes churches are either, you know, into the Holy Spirit, which is absolutely essential or they're into the word but they can be dry so our vision really is to hold the two together the word and the spirit and to keep the word of God central but the word of God is is move, the spirit of God moves with the word of God and brings it to pass so that our vision there is really my ministry mostly is is the teaching of the word of God to bring people into a more in-depth knowledge of the word of God Amen. because Jesus said you know if the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. But how does he set us free? He says, if you are truly my disciples, you will continue in my word. And the word that you know will set you free. The truth, he says, will set you free if you know it. Wonderful. And that's, there's no shortcut. You have to know the word of God. Amen. And you've got to do it. And uh, that's what it's all about, really. Amen. God bless you, sir. You know, it is said that your church is international in nature. Yes. With over 20 nations represented. It, yes. Can you tell us a bit about this, please? God had put in our hearts right from the very beginning that we wanted all tribes, all nations, um, as it is um, spoken in the word. And we, we longed to have all different nations in the church. And it's, it's God. When I look at the 20 nations, actually even more than that now, I think, look what the Lord has done. It is wonderful in our eyes. And we get on so well together. You actually forget the fact that you all come from different countries because of the love of the Lord and, and mm. just surrounding us. Amen. You know, what it reminds me of was my, my brother's church in Brazil. Mm, I went yes. to minister there and I was, I, on a particular day I was on this platform and I was looking across and I saw all the different colors represented yeah. in that church right from proper black african yes. to proper caucasian white yeah. right across you know it was it was unbelievable <laughs> and i said this is how the kingdom of god is yes which is, which is just wonderful that's why i get uncomfortable when i go to a church it's majority you know mostly mm. blacks and you don't even get a white person in there you go to another one it's just mostly whites white. there's no yes. then i said something is wrong because when the message comes with the demonstration of the power of god yes. it draws in every color yes it, isn't it fantastic? That's why when I meet people like yourself, I'm excited because this is, this is interesting. <laughs> well, that's what heaven will be like, isn't it? Amen. Yes. The vision of heaven, all yes. tribes, all nations, all worshiping God together because Amen. we're all one in yes. Christ. So you are in Oxford. Oxford. Well, there's a lot of guys in Oxford right now that are watching. You don't even know this church exists in Oxford. I want you to take the phone number down and the details on the screen. Make sure you call them. Go pay them a visit. Just go see whether what they're saying here in the studio it's exactly what you can see on the ground there. <laughs> Take the details down and go fellowship with these guys. Because I've interviewed a pastor from Oxford before and she said, oh, people came to the church and said, we didn't even know you exist. We didn't even know where you are. Where are you in Oxford? Where do you yeah, are in, in Headington, Headington okay. which is the London side of uh, Oxford. Okay. And we meet at Cheney School, Cheney School Hall on Cheney Lane. Okay. And 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock on Sunday. On Sunday, so fantastic. Everyone's welcome. And you are on our channel here uh, on what That's day? Right. Sir? We've just started in the month of April. Okay. We began and we're excited about it. It's wonderful to be on the Revelation. Now, what we day, what day are you on? And now That's on Tuesdays. Okay. Every Tuesday at 6 o'clock in the evening. Fantastic. Tune in and uh, you're, the program's called Into the Word. So okay. let's, let's get into the Word. Let's get deeper into the Word. Amen. So You uh, wanted to add something to what she was sharing concerning the international nature of the, of the well, church. I, it, it was just that, that. That's what heaven is like. Like you said, the kingdom of God. And Amen. so I believe it's a witness. If, if it's just all the same kind of people or all intellectuals or all, you know, all one kind of people together, I think it's a much better witness is if all the small the great of all different nations all different kind of jobs all different ages and if the church can be that and be in unity that is a great witness i believe Amen. to the world so. god bless you sir god richly bless yeah. you you have missions overseas in malawi yes. in um in malawi pakistan can you tell us about this it's always been important for us because we were certainly taught that 
you, uh, every, a church has to be great commission minded and, and missions is so important and so we've supported Rick Renner Ministries He's, he does a t great outreach to the former Soviet Union but one of the things that we really got involved with that took us by surprise we were invited to do a healing crusade in Pakistan wow. and that was like out of the blue and we thought that was exciting to us and this was uh, way back uh, about 10 years ago and we were invited to Lahore in Pakistan and we, we actually did an open-air crusade this was new for us and it, it was right underneath a mosque as well on a field <laughs> and so we we, we started we, we preached you know Jesus and and of course Jesus the healer and uh, we did get a death threat during the week which kept things exciting so we had to be rushing around hiding <laughs> but um, that was a baptism of fire for us but since then we've been, had a we've had a mission in Pakistan and there is a whole group of churches now um, underneath us that, that that we support. I go out to Pakistan most years, teach in the Bible schools there in Lahore and Quetta near Afghanistan and so that happened but we've always made missions a priority like we we will give 40 percent of our giving wow. to missions. 40 percent? 40 percent and I believe you have to put missions first. If a church is going to be healthy if, if we put the Great Commission first, then God will be able to bless us in other Amen. ways. Amen. And, and uh, you know, it shouldn't be the, the little bit left over. Yeah. So we, we make missions really important. Oh, we, we support uh, Abel Govender, has been from South Africa. He's been on Revelation, and we, we help him and with their AIDS home in South Africa. Wow. And Malawi, there's a couple of churches now where we're voting in Malawi. So. I believe it's healthy to be missions, Amen. missions minded, you know. Pastor, I thank God for your life. And as you were talking, what God was releasing through me was that you haven't seen anything yet. Thank you. This ministry is going to blossom. Uh, it's going to explode all over the world. There are disciples that will leave this ministry to go and do exploits to the glory of God. And that's when God, you know, because God is no respecter of persons. Mm. That's what he is sharing with me. And I thank God for your life, sir. Thanks. Just keep on doing what you're doing and keep the fire burning. God bless you. I'll receive that. Amen. Yes. This is great. Uh, Pastor Hillary, yes. you had a d dramatic healing experience. Yes, I did. You know, for the benefit of viewers yes. who are going through one problem or the other, mm. I believe your uh, testimony will be able to encourage some, will be able to yeah. heal some even. Yeah. And I want to just encourage you, if you are watching, mm. take down the details because when the, we're going to pray at the end of the program mm. and when they pray and healing takes place make sure you contact either revelation tv you can contact me or contact them direct that's why i have to take the details down my email address is yemi at revelation tv.com god bless you so this uh, yeah. testimony can you just sh share it to the yes. glory of god please? um in 1977 i had the onset of rheumatoid arthritis and unless you'd experienced that kind of pain it's almost impossible to imagine it the only way i could describe it is like raging toothache in every joint and it's like um i even felt as though i had hot needles stabbing right through my sternum um and I, I wanted to commit suicide. I wasn't a Christian at the time. And I would cry, oh God, oh God, if there is a God, help me. And I just got worse and worse and worse. It's like if you're sick, but you're getting better little by little by little, then somehow psychologically and emotionally you can handle it. But if you find every day you're worse, every day you're more disabled, every day you're in more pain. And I was in pain 24 hours a day. And the painkillers wouldn't take the pain away but it would bring it down to a manageable level and I remember that after I'd taken painkillers after two and a half hours I'd be looking at the clock and thinking I've, I've got to wait another hour and a half before I dare take any more and so the real breakthrough came to me uh, when in absolute desperation I'd asked my mother to take me to the health food store because I thought you know, if, if I had to do handstands um, if someone said that would heal me I would do just anything just anything I was so desperate and I bumped into a girl that I used to work with when I was a medical secretary at the Radcliffe Infirmary and she said where are you working I said Jeannie I can't work my shoulders are frozen I have no power in my hands I, I, I just can't lift my arms and so she said God healed me of cervical spondylosis he'll heal you too and I thought yeah and cows can fly <laughs> um, but anyway, she said she would take me to a healing meeting, and she kept her promise. She took me to a, a healing crusade. Uh, the gentleman there was Fred Smith, the evangelist. And when he preached, 
I came under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and I didn't recognize it as such. All I knew was when he asked people to come forward and give their hearts to the Lord, I just knew I'd got to go up. Um, and, but I was embarrassed at the same time. I thought, I hope nobody here knows me because I'm so embarrassed, you know, because I was non-Christian and I thought, oh, you know, I'd be so, so very, very embarrassed. But, but God... God accepted me. If I'd been in God's place, I'd have said, look, honey, you go back, you get your attitude right, then I'll do something for you. <laughs> but God accepted me as I was. I am so grateful to him. And then we went back to our seats, and then um, Fred spoke a little bit about the healing anointing, and then he asked people to come forward to be prayed for. And I went forward. I had never experienced anything like this in my life before because people were, f were going down on the floor and I'd, I'd never seen that ever. Um, and someone said, don't be afraid, people are just under the power of the Lord. And I saw the lady in front of me and she, she had looked so worried and anxious and so unwell before she was prayed for, but when she was lying on the floor, she looked so relaxed and, you know, she had rosy cheeks. And I thought, well, it can't be that bad. But I thought, well, I've got my best suit on. I am not. I am not going on this grubby old floor. So, but God, <laughs> but God had another thing for me. Um, and Fred looked into my eyes and he said, God has saved your soul. He will heal your body. And I believed what he said and he laid hands on me he said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I command the spirit of arthritis to leave you and he laid his hands on my head and suddenly I felt the most incredible power just go right through the top of my head and it was so amazingly powerful but so gentle and warm and as it, it gradually went through my body and as it went through it was pushing the pain out and it went right down to the bottom of my feet and at one point I just remembered kind of just falling backwards and someone caught me and laid me on the ground and I felt power rushing up and down my whole body because I, I got it everywhere, absolutely everywhere my arms and everything and then Fred came to me and he helped me to my feet and he said now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth raise your arms and immediately I thought I can't I haven't been able to raise my arms f for, for ages, but I thought, well, I better do what the man said. And as I began to raise my arms, all the heaviness had gone, all the disability. I could move my arms totally freely and up and down. And I mean, it was just absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. And from that time on, I really desired to serve the Lord. But it didn't really sort of come together until Derek and I got married and we went to Bible school and God trained us and, and um, God caused us to pioneer the church. Yeah, God bless you. So, That's wonderful. God is so good. Amen. God is so good. I just want to encourage you, the same God that did this for her yes. can do it for you too. Oh, yes. Just take down the details because she's still going to pray at the end of the program and pray for you and pray that God will touch you in a very special way. God bless you. You know, I, I, you know, this your ministry is an unusual ministry. You know, I find it difficult to get away from the fact that you know you you have 80 percent of income that comes, sorry, 40 percent of income that comes into the church okay. goes towards mission. Yes. And then we have big churches who don't even do up to that. And that's why I know that God is going to bless you guys. He will bless the ministry greatly. God bless you. So what, I need to ask you, Pastor Derek, what's the vision behind this television program you just started with us here on Revelation TV? We believe um, there's a call of God on us to, to bring forth the Word of God uh, and in the church, but we feel also he wants that to go out on a wider scale. And I guess what we offer is to get people deeper into the Word of God, to bring a deeper knowledge of the Word of God as a foundation under their lives that they can build upon. And so the vision really is like the name of the program, Into the Word. Let's get into the Word. You see, people get into all kinds of things. They're looking for answers, even Christians. They're looking for fixes or, or, or some trick that will help them get through. But the, there is, you know, we need to get into the Word. We need to be addicted to the Word of God. And if we will get into the Word, the Word will get in us, and the Word will set us free. God's power is in His Word. Amen. But we need to get into the Word. And really, that's the vision of the program, is just to get people into the Word, make it interesting to them, but also you know, let them really know the Word. Amen. And and not just in a superficial way, you understand, right. but get them into into Amen. it deep. Amen. God bless you. So, Wonderful. Hopefully we'll do that. I've just been informed <laughs> that time is flying. 
But I just want you, because I still believe you need to minister to people. You spend a few minutes. I want you to look in that camera over there, both of you. Yeah. Can minister according to leading of the Spirit of God? Whether you want to pray for people or you want to speak into their lives, word of encouragement or whatever. You yes. can go ahead for just about two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Well, time does fly. <laughs> I want to encourage you that just like God healed Hillary, he wants to heal you too. Jesus said in Mark 11:24, he said, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When you pray, believe that you receive healing and you shall have it. And here Jesus is promising that healing is available to you. It's God's will to heal you. Just like it was to heal Hillary, Jesus healed all those that came to him. And God will release healing to you the moment you pray. Because otherwise, how could you believe you receive it if God didn't give it when you prayed? When you pray and ask God for healing, God's healing power will flow into you. And I want you to be ready to receive your healing right now as we pray. We're going to believe that as we speak those words of healing, God's healing power will go into your body and s start making you recover. And you just have to believe that and receive it. So Hillary and I are going to pray together now yes. in the name of Jesus to each person there. As you're watching this program, God is ready to bless you. God is a liberal giver of healing power. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we release by the authority in that name your healing power that flows from the cross. Let that healing power flow right now into their body, into your body. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed now. In Jesus' name, receive it. Receive your healing. That healing power goes into you now. And start thanking God for his healing power that's now working in your body. He's true to his word. His healing power is flowing now for you. Just receive and say, thank you, Lord. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. I give you healing power now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I want to just quickly talk about your, your materials. You got, some, uh, you got a, uh, a pack of messages here. Eight messages is a CD. On CDs? Okay, On the CD. Blood Covenant. The Blood Covenant. That's right. Right. Um, I think we, we get it. Like, we can have it displayed now. What, what can you, in a nutshell, tell us what is what is about? When I studied for this, I didn't realize how important the blood covenant was. It's absolutely essential to build a firm faith. Is to understand the blood covenant. We do not understand covenant today. It's not in our society. You cannot comprehend the Bible without a firm knowledge of the blood covenant. And God backs covenant up. And if you understand that every promise of God is a, He swears by an oath to fulfill it then you will have strong faith. Every promise in Christ is soaked in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Then there's another book here, How to Receive Your Healing. That's right. Yeah, um, it gives the four steps to believing that you receive your healing. There are four steps that it, often people are hit and miss. They don't know how to believe they receive because they don't have the foundational knowledge. But that book provides the foundations, the four steps that will prepare you to believe you receive your healing. Amen. So how can people get copies of this? Yeah, if they just um, call us and okay. order them, that'll okay. be fine. <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, um, I just, I've got a card here that shows the cosmopolitan nature of your church, which is wonderful. Oh, well, this is beautiful. Can you, uh, can you just tell us a bit about that? Just brief. Anyway, you've spoken about the, 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 That's right. the Rainbow Coalition, as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> this okay, is we've got, we're going to have an international dinner after the morning service in, uh, in a few weeks. So if people are interested, they could come along for that. Uh, Amen. Very welcome. Amen. Well, you, you talk about the, the Blood Covenant. Then there's a, there's a message as, as well that's coming very soon on this channel. You, God's healing power, which is to do with what you've got in the book as okay, well. For the next month or two, we're going to be teaching the Blood Covenant on the program on Tuesday at 6. Yes. And then after that, we'll, we'll teach this healing uh, message as well. Amen. And then we'll get into some end time prophecy later on in the year. So Amen. we've got some good things ahead. Pastor Hillary, yes. I need to just share one testimony yes. of something that God has done in this ministry that's made you go, wow. Yes, there, there was a young man in the church and he had been, he'd had a damaged eardrum and he had been deaf for 15 years 
and he came, Derek had been teaching on healing and he believed that he received and he wanted to come forward for hands to be laid on him and when Derek laid hands on him he went down under the power of the Lord and then he was disturbed because it, it seemed so noisy and he suddenly realized hearing had come he had perfect hearing and now he can ride his bike he couldn't ride his bike because when you're deaf in one ear you, you lose your sense of balance and he was absolutely thrilled Wow! So that was the, a physical miracle that was a physical miracle the removal of an infection the no no it was a damaged was eardrum and damaged. now it's perfect fantastic God bless you we just wowed by the Lord that's, yeah, that's a wow miracle God bless you I really thank God for your lives and I'm looking forward to having you guys back in the studio here because being a teacher I believe there's a lot more we need to you know we need to share to bless people out there we'd love to come back God yeah. bless you sir will I ring something well, I want to just encourage you, take down the phone number on the screen and make sure you call. If you live around Oxford, what other towns do you have around Oxford? Well, around, around the area where you are, what are those yeah, towns or villages? Or? We, we have a church in Deddington as well, if anyone's okay. interested, that meets at 3 o'clock, Deddington okay. Bible Church. Okay. But uh, Kidlington and... Uh, There's Aylesbury Tame. Okay, yeah. um, brilliant. Well, you have friends in Oxford or in surrounding areas, give the number to them, let them just go pay a visit and go enjoy a great time of worship. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming in tonight and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you so God, much. I'm, I'm really encouraged and you know, and I believe a lot of people out there are encouraged by what you just shared today yeah. concerning your ministry and concerning what God is doing and your own selflessness in actually supporting the work of the kingdom. God bless you both. Thank Aww. you. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Thank right. you. God bless you. On that note, I want to say thank you for watching but don't go away. Keep your dial exactly where it is because on the other side, I got another man, great man of integrity. Keep it down where it is. We'll be back after the short music break.